A lot of viewers have asked me if I would make a video about my workshop, so here it is, a guided tour of my workshop. My workshop is a very modest affair. It's in a double length garage built onto the side of my house. And this is the outer part of the workshop that you've probably heard me speaking about. This is where I do all the dirty jobs, and this is my acid bath. And if there's something in the acid bath, Oh yes, it's a piece of pipe off that boiler plant, I forgot to take it out. Luckily, the acid isn't very strong, so it hasn't eaten away all the copper. I use some stuff called Kilrock K, which is kettle descaler, and it's not as strong as sulfuric acid. This is the pipe, it will polish up nicely now. Under the bench, at the side of the acid bath, is an old Lister D petrol engine, that I run now and again, it's quite a nice old thing. On the bench above the Lister D petrol engine, is where I keep all my grinding equipment. On the opposite side of this outside part of the workshop is where I keep flight cases full of stage lighting equipment that I seldom use. You really never know when you might need some stage lighting equipment. And now for a more detailed look at my grinding and polishing equipment, starting with the polishing spindle with a grinder on the end that I never use, and a 4 inch belt sander, or linisher. I bought these recently, and they're not very expensive, but they do the job, because it's not running at an industrial level. Here also is a 1 inch belt sander that I bought recently, and the orange thing to the right of that is a really old grinder that I've had for many years. This green thing I bought from a local supermarket the other week, it was incredibly cheap. My main reason for buying it was so that I could feature it in a video all about sharpening twist drills. And once again over the other side of this part of the workshop are a load of stands. There are some tripods and lighting stands. And this is a view looking out of the door at the garden. This has nothing to do with the workshop, but you can see my small railway that runs around the garden. It's 400 feet long and is 7 and a quarter inch gauge. And now, without further ado, welcome to my main workshop. It's a very humble affair. I'll have a quick walk into it, holding the camera. That's about it then. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <coughs> Don't worry, that's me just being stupid. Right then, this is the bench where I do most of the work. If you've been watching my videos, you'll see this view frequently. To the left of this bench is always a thorough mess, and I make no apologies for this. I do not have the time to hang the tools up or put them away. They all sit on the bench, and I know where they all are. And above the bench are these really useful drawers full of interesting things that I use all the time. The drawers on the right hand side are mainly full of BA nuts and bolts. The drawers on the left hand side belonged to my late father, and it's quite remarkable how often I find things in these drawers that are actually lost. And now, let there be light. Light is quite an essential requirement for making these videos, and these are four LED strip lights above the bench. Midway between the bench and the strip lights, fastened to the wall, are an old set of cupboards. These originally came out of the kitchen in the house that I live in, and attached to the junction of one of these cupboards, is a carbon monoxide monitor, and it's very important to have one of these in the workshop if you intend to run gas-fired steam boilers in there. You may recognise this engine on the bench, this is the Stuart Models number one steam engine that I've been repairing. And this is my bandsaw, and next to my bandsaw is a globe that I've also been repairing for a friend of mine. You know it's a really nice thing, I think I'm going to buy myself one of these. I find it quite satisfying spinning the globe and playing God, even being able to change the Earth's axis with a flick of the wrist. And moving on from world domination, here is my metal store. These are different boxes of different metals, and all very easy to access. And above the metal storage area are some shelving brackets, holding a variety of different things, including a plastic kit of Titanic that one day I will get round to building. These plastic drawers are where I keep all my steam fitting parts. Everything from union nuts in popular sizes, to adapters, pressure gauges, and lots of other interesting things. This is a general shot of the back wall of the workshop, and there are some steam engines on the bench. The one on the left is the Clarkson engine that I rebuilt a while back, then it's the twin 5A engine, and then the triple expansion engine that I'm just about to start work on. This is a bit of a long term project, this belongs to a friend of mine who lives down in the south coast of England and he doesn't get up north very often. You may be thinking, why do I have a plastic aeroplane hung on the wall and lots of aeroplane pictures? Well, I like aeroplanes, so I'll just zoom past and look at them. Spitfires, beautiful aircraft, designed by the late R.J. Mitchell, and he died before he saw the Spitfire doing what he'd designed it to do. 
And then there's this one, a GB racer. I really love the cartoon-like quality, colour scheme, shape and everything of a GBR2. But unfortunately, the full size killed most of the pilots who flew it. And here, at the right hand side of the back wall, are some more plastic drawers, full of old Hammond organ parts. The plastic aeroplane that you can see hung from the wall, is a Wenmac Douglas A24 attack bomber. And I had one of these when I was a child. My father bought me it for Christmas one year, and I really loved this. But it's not the same one, this is one that I bought recently. It brings back many happy memories of my childhood and sat on the floor immediately below the Wenmac Douglas A24 attack bomber is an old bandsaw. I've had this for a long, long time. If I remember rightly, I think I bought it around 1984. This is not a very good quality machine. It has a few shortcomings, but it cuts any of the metal that I put in it. And it's done this faultlessly since 1984. And here's a Stuart Beam engine in need of some restoration and TLC. And above that, sort of a sculpture of a little metal man operating a lathe. Like the Stuart Beam engine, I have other engines in the workshop that belong to a collector. There were potential rebuilds for a steam museum that never really came off, and I could really do with the collector collecting them. Way up on the top shelf is an old model aeroplane. I used to fly this, but everything's gone over to electric now, and I don't really like that. I prefer the old school internal combustion engine aeroplanes. Below the aeroplane there are some more shelves, and these are above my old Smart and Brown lathe, and they contain collets for the collet chuck, and the collet chuck itself, some more little drawers, taps and dies, tools, drills, everything I can think of. And here is the lathe in question, my old Smart and Brown model 1024. It's a really good old tool room lathe, very accurate and very strong. I originally bought this lathe from a tool dealer. And when I was asking him the prices of all his lathes, they were all 2000 3000 and this one was £650, so I said, what's the catch? He said, well, nothing really. It came out of a school for children with learning difficulties, and to prevent the lead screw and the auto travers from working, they threw away the two gears that drove the gearbox, which I replaced with a tooth belt. I made a lightweight, rigid framework that attaches to the shelves, and this allows me to put a camera on the mount in order to film the lathe operations from a good viewpoint. There's also an LED bar light over this lathe, but I really don't need it. This is my pillar drill, it's floor mounted, I never got round to bolting it onto the floor, and I don't like it, I've never liked it. This one though, is an old Taiwanese milling machine, and again, like the bandsaw, it's not brilliant, but it does the job, and it's done it for many, many years. This blue box coming into shot at the moment is called a Transwave Converter, and it converts my mains, which is 240 volts, to a 415 volt three-phase supply, and this powers the three-phase motor that's fitted to my small Boxford lathe, which the camera is just looking at at the moment. On the top of this glass cabinet is my robot and my action man. And in the glass cabinet below, there are lots of things. Model aircraft engines, Leslie speaker drivers, Leslie speaker motors, Hammond organ motors, Hammond organ swell pedals, an M100 preamp and a box of Hammond valves, a long metal Hammond badge and more spurious Hammond parts at the bottom. Here's a static view of my small box for the AUD. AUD means it's underdriven, the motor's in the bottom. It's on a proper cabinet and it's a great machine. Above this, some more shelves. I do need a lot of storage in my workshop. There are all sorts of things on these shelves, from oil cans to engines I've worked on, to engines I'm about to work on, to boilers, twist drills, oh yes, and there's a camera mount on the end. On the ground next to the Boxford is my workshop vacuum cleaner, and in the ceiling, lots of lights. I don't have all these switched on, because I do have plenty of light in the workshop anyway, and to film the lights that you've just seen, I did turn all those particular lights off. This is the inside view of the workshop door, and the sign that says 300 is a British Railways bridge number, I think, but it reminds me of the film 300 that I quite like. These are a couple of plaques that I was bought for Christmas, and I just stuck them on the door just for fun. I'll just play God and spin the globe one more time, because it's going back to its owner this evening. And that concludes the guided tour to my humble workshop. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.